Hey, Fee. Hey, Tracy. What should we do today? Let's watch this hip TV show with girls like you and me. It's free. <laughs> for the computer savvy. Hello and welcome back to Geek Girl TV. As usual, I'm your Geek Girl host, Eve Park, the girl who this week is sporting pigtails specifically for new viewer Maxwell. Hey Maxwell. The Geek Girl TV theme song was created by The Days, which you can check out at myspace.com slash The Days Girls. And lastly, this is episode 40. The number 40, according to Wikipedia, is the only number in the English language whose letters, F-O-R-T-Y, are in alphabetical order. And I can't think of any exception to that rule, so I assume they're right. Also, viewer FX Robot writes and says that the number 40 is the atomic number for zirconium, which has 40 protons. My diligent researchers tell me that next episode is number 41. So if you have a cool, geeky, or obscure fact about the number 41, please share it with me at geekgirl at clevermedia.com. And don't tell me that number 41 is the atomic number for Nairobium, because we did atomic numbers this week. Unless, of course, you can go the extra mile and tell me a super cool fact about Nairobium that I don't already know. This week, I'm sporting my piratey polo shirt. And if you did your homework from last week and watched me guest host Mac Most, you'll recognize it. One of the funniest YouTube comments, though, was that it was a Hamburglar shirt, which it actually does remind me of. Today I have a special treat for you, a product review, which I wish I could do more often. But it's not every week that I spend money on electronics. This bad boy is the Oregon Scientific ATC 2K Action Cam Flash Memory Camcorder. So what's so special about it, you might ask? Well, after careful research, in my opinion, it is the consumer-level sports cam. For starters, it's waterproof up to three meters, so you could take it windsurfing or snorkeling and record all the fishies. It's also pretty rugged. It's still pretty small but it feels really solid and it's got this large rubber section that protects the lens. And the best part is that it's only $85 at Amazon.com. But what makes it so cheap? Well, primarily the fact that it records to SD cards and it uses AA batteries for power. Now I see this as actually a positive because even though my regular camcorder records to a hard drive and uses a rechargeable battery, it's a lot bulkier than anything I would ever want to take in any sort of sporting activity, even if I wasn't afraid of breaking it. This little thing can easily strap to a helmet, and if you run out of recording time after an hour or so, you could simply swap out the card and extra batteries and record all day long. But most importantly, does it work? Well, I personally haven't put it to the test of the elements yet, but a simple YouTube search of ATC2K will show you many people doing things with it that you wouldn't want to do with your normal expensive camcorder. So in my research of user feedback, I found two main categories of complaints about this camera, and the first is about sound. People complained that when they spoke into it, it didn't record voices very well. And Oregon Scientific actually responds saying that it's on purpose, saying that you're not supposed to be giving monologues while you're, say, scuba diving, or if you took it mountain biking or hang gliding, all you would get would be an annoying wind noise. So it's intentionally unsensitive to a constant droning noise. So while you may be able to hear your friends cheer you on as you land a superfly skateboarding trick, you're not going to be able to record live a Nature Channel-esque monologue about the scenery around you. The other major complaint was that the camera vibrated too much while recording. Well, in response to that, let me show you all the accessories that come with it. This little thing will attach the camera to a variety of different straps, such as a large Velcro strap, 
appropriate for attaching the camera to a helmet, the small Velcro strap, and a large rubber strap, also appropriate for strapping to a helmet. It also comes with this round thing that fits the camera quite securely, which screws onto a part that I've attached to my bike's handlebars. Now to be fair, the camera did vibrate a little too much on my first experiment, but the camera also came with a variety of rubberized and Velcro pads for minor adjustments. I feel that they've provided enough accessories that you should be able to get a tight fit on whatever you want to attach it to. I have no doubt that if I applied the thick rubber pad to the handlebar clamp, I would get a lot less shaky picture. And it would probably be even better if I used it on a mountain bike instead of a road bike for absorbing all those little shocks. However, I bought the camera not for biking, but for snow sports. Extremely cold temperatures present a couple of issues. First is battery life. If you'd like to use this camera for skiing or snowboarding, keep in mind that certain types of batteries drain incredibly fast at cold temperatures. So it bears a little bit of research which type of AA batteries you purchase to take up with you. Secondly, I have experienced with other small electronic devices at extremely cold temperatures glitches in memory. Well, to help with both these problems, Oregon Scientific has a cold weather cover available for this camera that helps it function at temperatures even colder than this rugged camera is normally capable of. So let's see how it works. If I unscrew the cap like so, here you have output for USB and television. It comes with both these cables available. There you have the SD card, and here, if you push down like that, you can open up and access the battery compartment. Now what keeps this waterproof is an O-ring, actually a double O-ring, around this section here. And it comes with a small tub of silicon grease, which you apply yourself to make sure you have a waterproof seal. Be warned that you're not going to get as high a picture quality with this camera as you will with your nice video camera that probably costs more than $85. But really, this is just about your only option out there. There's a Tony Hawk brand helmet cam that looks similar, but gets bad reviews pretty much across the board, so don't go there. Any waterproof camera out there that would give as good a picture as my regular camcorder would cost over $600 and easily over a grand. And I don't know about you, but I don't snowboard well enough to justify that. Plus. I would be a little nervous about beating up on a camera that cost over a thousand dollars, even if it was built to be beat up on. My only real complaint is that it records to Windows media files, which for the gazillion Windows users out there is no problem. But at work, where I use a Mac to produce Geek Girl, it's going to take a little bit of conversion before I can show you any of my full footage. In conclusion, it has its drawbacks but in my opinion, is a lot of camera for 85 bucks. Plus, I think it is the perfect camera. If you just want to have fun doing whatever physical activity you do with friends and family that is too wet or hazardous to involve a regular camcorder. That's all the time I have this week, but I hope you enjoyed my newest gadget. I know I will. In fact, I'm super stoked and can't wait till winter. Remember, send me your questions, comments, and feedback to geekgirl at clevermedia.com and I'll see you next week.